thing. But, um, you know, it, it was quite funny, I have to say, that um, I, I was in the States, um, when was it, God, about four or five years ago. Yeah. And um, I was, I, I took a band over to LA, to, obviously, to try and get a deal like so many people do. Yeah. Um, and the amount of times that your name came up, was really? was quite frightening, yeah. Oh, where? <laughs> with various producers uh, at Castle and a couple of other places, um, with various guys that are. Um, really? What's the guy's name? John. John. I think his surname now. Um, that that knew of you. Oh, right. Um, and I mean, I, it was a case that that became my sort of common denominator. It was okay. Everybody knew who you were, so then they could equate to what South Africa was all about. Because. Well, that's you know. Yeah. So you, you see, <laughs> you're you're bigger than you think you are. Really? Yeah. So that that. Well, what a surprise. Yeah. Well, no, when you know when 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 the best of came through, I just it suddenly sort of clicked and all came together, and I just thought, yeah, I know. So, I mean, yeah, five years ago I was sort of trundling around Santa Monica. And there's people going, yeah, no, you know, Steve Lowe, yeah, know we know this oak. Yeah, he he worked in our studio. We did, you know, th there was some connection, you know, obviously, I mean, with all the people that you've been involved with. Yeah. Um, you know, so I mean, of course, you're giving away your age. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but um, yeah, let's just uh, first off to say congratulations. Um, on, uh, um, I think it's a it's a nice um, sort of piece of work. I think you know to to be able to put an album together, obviously throw some new songs in as well yeah. but um, putting it all together and sort of uh, sort of quite a reflective album for you putting it together and putting the tracks on it was nice it was nice writing the liner notes but I mean I think for Kevin too I mean, he helped me put it together and choose the tracks so, I mean when we lay waiting for the dawn which was like nine years ago yeah you know the time the time's gone so fast that it's amazing it's become a huge producer and all that and you know like nine years ago we were like so Mm. Yeah. So it's great for you. Yeah. It's nice. It's so nice working with him. It was great to be the studio songs for him. Mm. Mm. And I'm going to do a new album with him next year. So. You're standing. Yeah. Now, did you, did you work with him while he was out here, or was it a case of sending stuff backwards and forwards to him? No, when, we, when he did Waiting for the Dawn, he was here. Yeah, I mean, that was yeah. then. Yeah, no, no, I went there to New York. Yes. It was great. I, just, I stayed with him, and, and um, he went out to the studio. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. So is he still humble? Very much so. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, it's, you know, in some ways, I mean, you know, you and Kevin go back so, you know, go back so many years. Yeah. And, you know, Kevin went, you know, his route and you went yours. And the thing is that it would have been so nice. I mean, as much as you are still, you know, you, you always regroup and, I mean, um, you know, get back together. It would, have, it would have been poetic justice if if the kind of success that he's enjoyed as a producer could have been equaled from your side. Oh, it's not too late yet. No, no, this is, I, I must admit, I commend you for that. I honestly do, because I mean, I've got, uh, I mean, I've got mates all over the world, uh, musicians like yeah. yourself, and uh, I don't know how they do it. Um, you know, the thing is, South Africa was it was actually probably the the last place yeah. that you would ever think that you would get the kind of credit yeah. due to you. Yeah. Um, but we still maintain, you know, and you have to ask yourself, why the hell do you do it? You know. I think that's what's uh, really nice about music is that it's such an instant process. I mean, you can. You can write a song in the next ten minutes, and you can go and record it. And mm. in, you know, a couple of hours, you can have a you can have a song recorded. Mm. It's brilliant. And songs sort of creep up on you. You know, you can be sitting with your own guitar, and the song sort of writes itself. Mm. And that's really what I love about music, mm. as compared to making movies or something. Which yeah. Is such a, you know, like watching paint dry. It's like laborious, yeah. Jesus, yeah. You know, there's like this huge budget. And like put people and they needed yesterday guineas and yeah yeah, yeah. And with, you know a band can go into a studio and make an album in a night mm -hmm. and I mean that's, that's to me that's the beauty of music when it's just somebody putting out an acoustic guitar and it's just you know mm -hmm. it's a, a classic song and you can just hear it this is a yeah this is something that everybody's going to be humming for the next 20 years yeah yeah no I mean as, as far as Big Sky is concerned I mean just even you know just you as a you know, as an individual, you are, I mean, you've enjoyed probably more critical acclaim than you have sort of commercial success. Yeah. Now, you know, I mean, I think obviously commercial success is obviously the, is, is the nice one to have. But um, are you happy with, you know, with, with the place that you're at? You know, yeah, or, definitely. I mean, mm. if you look at it, yeah, I was actually walking around town this afternoon and I was just looking in the window of Musica mm. where they, they put out the top 
10 or 20 yeah. selling CDs. Mm. And if you see what the top 20 CDs are, mm. you know, it's not surprising that you don't have commercial success here because you know, a band like Live, yeah. you know, these brilliant bands, mm. they sell a couple of hundred CDs here. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, South African market is that kind of market. Yeah. You know, where the things that sell are, you know, rugby compilations. Sort of That's Irving Strasberg's fault, though. Yeah. <laughs> novelty, novelty songs. Yes. Um, it's that kind of market. Yeah. Um, and that's why, I mean, Kevin is a, is a fantastic producer, you know, I mean, he would label on an album and put it out to his Robin Oil or David Karma, and mm. he's really frustrated that, that it didn't receive, you know, the sort of commercial recognition, and nobody knows the sound, so they're yeah. going to come down and copy yeah. Um And I think that's the thing for all South African musicians, mm. it, it's to make the jump into a different marketplace. Yeah. It's never been the fault of the music. No. It's not the fault of the market. You know, the people are the people. That's what they like. But then again, I mean, I think for a great many years, um, and I'm, I'm sure you, you've experienced it too, um, you'd have you know, countless people coming to your live shows yes. and loving your live shows, but not buying your albums. No, they won't go out far. But probably, I mean, I, I know, I mean, I, I was guilty of it for, you know, I mean, for a great many years, I wouldn't buy local albums because it wasn't that musically the bands were spot on. You know, lyrically the bands were spot on, but production wise oh, the whole yeah. thing just died, a sad yeah, death. Yeah. Um, I think that's one thing I've always, I'm so pretty proud of all the albums. I've yes. Good. Yeah, the, you certainly, I mean, I think with working with the likes of Kevin, I mean, I think Kevin had the yeah. had the ear for it from day one yeah. and I mean you were doing something that was I think totally unheard of yeah. um, as far as that was concerned and it's weird you know I mean in our first record we made it with this guy John Rollo um, mm. I mean it, I got connected with Steve and Dan mm. you know at that stage I mean you a lot more naive when you think you know this record's going to really put yeah. the world on its head yeah. and then nobody came back <laughs> <laughs> like, <"Stuff> what <laughs> <laughs> this is the best starting rock and roll record ever. To come out of South Africa. Yeah. So what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Tell me why I should care. Yeah. 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 That was a. Uh, I think the first album. I mean, made me wake up. Mm. And after that, it, you know, nothing really changed. So I mean, uh, we were pretty disappointed. You know, we thought the first album was really going to take off. And yeah. I think our naivety is now gone and it doesn't work like that. We kind of understand that. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, the same applies also, you know, in, in bigger markets, you know, they're great bands. And I mean, it's just so competitive and it takes the stage. You know, mm. Thousands of fantastic bands that just didn't get the break. Yeah. And if you take, you can equate it to somebody like Kevin. I mean, his break, he was hitting his head against the wall. Suddenly, the Silverchair album that he never thought would do anything. Yeah. And it was a couple of kids. Mm. And it was just one of the last, you know, he's done 30 albums sort of in the last three years. Yeah. I mean, it's. That it's was the last one he on thought. Holiday in Australia, liked the album, took it back, played it on his radio show. Yeah. And the telephone sort of went crazy. Yeah, but that's the story, eh? Yeah. That's a, you know, it's, and after that, he just got a couple of breaks, but got the breaks and he could then deliver the goods. Yeah. He was like thrown into the line and then mm. saying, okay, there's this band called Aerosmith who just spent like five million dollars making an album with Glenn Ballard. Who yeah. And Lana Morris he decided to throw the whole thing away. Yeah. You, who all you've ever done is Silver Chair, will go and produce yeah. but who, you know, are these super ego superstars. Yeah. And don't want to work with you. Yeah. You go. Yeah, go have fun. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, you know, working with him, I mean, he had, he had rashes, but, you know, I'm sure. Stress, stress. <laughs> so hard. Yeah. But that, and I just, when I was going to sleep the other night, they played the song Pink. Yes. And you know, he told me that was just a rough mix. They weren't mm. going to put Pink on the album. Right. It was a rough mix that they just did to adapt. Yes. And he sent it to the band, and I said, I really think he was put this on the record. And you know, the first, the first CD that came out didn't have pink. That's on. right. So pull it out and then put pink on. On, yeah, and then it was a single. <laughs> 
Yeah, and I think Sometimes if it, you just need that, you know, mm, stars lined up. Sure, sure. But I mean, I think that, I mean, that probably applies to you as well with songs that you've written mm. and you thought, nah, you know, um, and then you, you you put it on and all of a sudden that's the one that, uh, you know, that people pick, pick up on and you go, okay, I don't understand why. Mm. Um, and I mean, I think that's probably the biggest frustration of any musician is trying to understand your market mm. um, or just the market that you, you perceive is yours. Um, yeah, it was interesting to me to see a band like Just Ginger, you know, they had that song, that father and father. Yeah, yeah. And that was just a song that sort of appealed to people, mm. like a chord. And, the record sort of selling itself. Yeah. It wasn't that the record company suddenly got clever. No. <laughs> no. The, the record company had like, most of them had done nothing with that band. Mm. People just heard this thing on the radio and said, well, I like that. I'm going to go to the record shop and ask for it. Mm, 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 mm. Now, you see, you sort of, in a way, put yourself not in a corner by releasing this album because now you've it's um, so this is just how I perceive it so you can tell me I'm completely wrong okay yeah. is that um, okay it's the best of the decade for you yeah. but you know best ofs are dangerous albums to release because it's almost um, well it's well well you're signaling the end of something yeah um but then in the same breath you could be signaling the beginning of something as well. Yeah, well the reason, I mean, uh, you might not know, but I, I sort of always, I haven't been signed directly to a record company. I'm sort just of distribution. Outside, outside of the record company, I've done all this, you know, the kind of marketing myself. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I mean, which we did from the All Night Radio album, mm. album and I basically just operated on favors from, you know, people like Kevin who worked for nothing in studios and all yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah. I was approached by Sony who basically said, we want to re-release all this stuff and re-release the All Night Radio album. Mm, mm, mm. And put a kind of a best of out as the first thing. Yeah. And, and then put out a new album and we think the best of will just, you know, heighten the, the profile of the band. I think so, yeah. And, and when you come with the new stuff... Uh, yeah, the profile will be work. back. Yeah, no, it makes sense. So, you know, that's, that's the thinking. Yeah. Uh, well, as opposed to saying, shit, I'm not going to make records anymore, let's just cash in and... Uh, yeah, just sell the catalogue. Kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. And uh, get the royalties. Sure. For me, it's kind of... Um, Starting with it now. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to get back into a lot of touring and stuff like that. Okay. So you're going to support, are you going to support the greatest, well, I mean, the yeah. greatest hits kind of thing? Yeah, we want to do um, a kind of double bill like we did with Rodriguez. Mm. Um, I remember that. With a band like Hot House Flowers. Or yeah. A similar, you know, um, some part knows them well and I know they want to come back here. Yeah. yeah. Or a band like, let's say you can bring out Tim Flynn. Mm, mm, mm. Started out. Stunning. Double bill. So those would be really nice concerts that would be well attended. Yes. I think position the band where it should be and be with that sort of whole thing. Yeah, yeah. So that's the thinking for the three to do two of those shows. Yeah, but I think it's it's, it's actually, it's, it's great. That you know that that the compilation has come out because I think you know your audience, your initial audience has, has probably moved, has probably moved on, bought one of the albums or has at least one of your albums. They'll now go and pick up the you know the best of the, de of the decade and sort of go you know shit I didn't realise that Big Sky had so many, you know it's I always find that with compilations you know of hits that you go Gee, you don't realise how many how many songs were were radio hits. Well, that's the thing. People know the song. Mm. And they don't know it's a big scar. Yeah. Sort of thing. So yeah. I want to really try and tighten the profile. I've never had the money to market the band properly. And yeah. So I'm prepared to do that. Right. And right. put out these five albums. Stunning. We'll be in the stores together. Nice. Yeah, you know, once all the Christmas stuff. Yeah. Otherwise it gets lost. Yeah. yeah and, and then to do the touring. And, and you know, the, the thinking is that like they've done now with the new girl. Yes. Get, you know, get a, a European release. What a pleasure, yeah. Everything that, it's almost like, um, it's it's not 10 years too late, but uh, it would have been nice if it had happened 10 years ago. Yeah, I mean, but also, I mean, Sony came to me and said, the new girl, we want to take them one step further. To their credit, I mean, they spent money on the band. Sure. Kevin said he would come and work. Uh, I mean, he did. On a royalty, yeah. He, he worked for nothing. Yeah. Yeah, he's got a royalty. Yeah. Um, and they, you know, the, and they committed to it and, and they taken them one step further. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, there would have been yet another great band that just got died of frustration. Yeah, yeah. You, you can 
go round and round South Africa so many times. Exactly. And that's it. Yeah, and there's so many bands that have suffered from that. I mean, yeah. it's like Squill. Yeah. And they great bands like Urban Creep. Yeah. I mean, I could see it happening to them. You know, yeah. It's like 400 gigs in a row. Yeah. And fuck this, you know. Well, you can't, you can't, I can't stand you. I can't well, this is the thing. You, you anymore. You can play it to the converted so many times. Yeah. And then that's it. Think of each other. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. You, 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 your tempers get frayed. Sure. And then, and then you get on a plane, you go to the UK, you go to the States, you get blown right back out of the water. You have this sort of... Um, you come back to Chris. Yeah, you know, and then you go, well, you know, what do I do now? You know, um, I've converted this market, but now I can't convert that market. So you do, I think at the end of the day, need to have the muscle of someone who can um, get something not onto someone's desk, but in, into their CD player that they actually listen to it and feel confident enough to release it because it's coming from their sister company or something like that. And ultimately, it's very sad because ultimately the music will shine through and you know, the songs will be heard and, and, and appreciated and people will then buy into it but it's to get it to that level I mean I'm sure you yeah. in the time that you've you know uh, been writing and recording have had that frustration where you've, you've listened to what has just been signed against what you were hoping mm. you would be it and you go what were, what were they thinking sure. because musically yours is just so much better mm. and it's not an egotistical thing or you know you just think that uh, it was sour grapes or whatever it is it's a case of you do need to have that muscle just to take it that one step further like you say you mm. you could not afford to do yeah and bands need to be nurtured I mean any artist uh, take one uh, artist like that girl Jewel yes you know nothing happened with her but they plugged away they yeah plugged away and plugged away yeah and you know the record companies really believed it and then suddenly it's just like Phew. yeah you know it's just everybody got it mm -hmm. so I mean in, in, I mean in your mind as far as you know being a South African musician in South Africa obviously now using South Africa I think has now become that springboard that but it's an acceptable place to come from yeah. yes now yeah Whereas, it wasn't at all. no and I mean the time that you spent in the States I mean what was that like for you well you had to overcome a tremendous hurdle of Skepticism and, and cynicism of the white South African. Mm. You basically had to prove to people that you weren't a racist. Yeah, you. first off. Yeah. And you know, people were friendly. Yeah. But you could feel them holding back and checking you out. Right. Who is this guy? Yeah. And, you know, and, and then once you're sort of, okay, you're just a normal person like that. Yeah. They relax. Mm. Uh, you had to overcome that. Mm. Like, you know, when you're friendly with somebody, you're not really friends until you have your first fight. That's true. You know, with that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, people sort of treated you with kid gloves. Yeah. Uh, that's the one. Observe. Yeah, and just sort of, okay. And musically, what what did they think of the stuff? No, musically, it's never, I mean, one thing with musicians which I really love is that they really just think you get played badly. I mean, yeah. playing together. Mm. And it's always been the same. Mm. Mm. Uh, once you start playing together, it's great. Mm. And when you when when you look back at uh, I mean at, at you know at, at your career, are you are you glad that it sort of has gone the way it has, or you know that? I mean, obviously, I would if I could choose between being sort of Steve Lowe or Dave Matthews. I'd probably, <laughs> you know, we're talking, you know, commercial success. I'd probably choose Dave Matthews. Yeah. And for one reason only, I would really love to be able to tour a lot more. Sure. And you can only tour a lot more if people want to come and see you. Correct. This number of people because of the logistics. Sure. You know, I would really have loved to be able to get out of the kind of combi touring scenario and just have the fan base that would enable one just to do it properly. Yeah. And have it sound and light show and, you know, play to a couple of thousand people. You know, mm. if we're going to go on tour where you could book 30 dates and know that, you know, three or four thousand people are going to come to the show. Yeah. That I, that's the one thing I would love to achieve. Well, I mean, I think the market here as well has grown up quite a bit to yeah. the point that, you know, people aren't supporting local music because it's local anymore. They're actually supporting it because it's actually bloody good. Um, and that whole, I don't know, I think that probably came around, you know, with, with all the changes that happened where people all of a sudden weren't afraid to be South African or admit that they were South African and all of a sudden we're actually shouting yeah. and promoting our own artists. I mean, uh, the number of times that I went to the UK with various South African bands and they would go and play it, uh, you know, in Shepherd's Bush and places like that. Yes, the place was full of South Africans, but it was South Africans who were staying there, yeah, right. but were shouting and, uh, you know, shouting up a storm about something that was theirs and they were proud to shout about it because 
um, you know, firstly, the, like we've said, the songs have always been there, but now all of a sudden there isn't sort of a newfound sort of patriotism, even on the local touring circuit, um, where the bands that four or five years ago gave up in utter frustration because it just wasn't coming together, now all of a sudden people are buying albums, are going to the gigs, um, and are, are, especially when you've got an international act, they go for the local act, they actually go to the gig to see the local act, and the, and the international act is almost just the bonus. Yes. Bring a band. Mm. It was great for the band because they had that exposure to the audience. It's really sort of ecstatic to see Rodriguez, but it sort of spilled over onto them. Yeah. That was a really nice experience for all of us. Mm. Now, the album that you um, are going to put out next year, um, would it be, would it have elements of of what you've done in the past decade, or are we looking at sort of, you know, Big Sky 2000 kind of thing with... I'd like to, I mean, I, don't, I can't really change musical direction in the sense that I don't want to say, look, uh, whatever, mm. trance music hits, I'm going to make a trance album. Yeah, yeah. I don't write songs like that. Yeah. But I really want to go for a harder edge for it. Just have it rock like crazy. Yeah. Uh, go for a live band playing in the studio, nice big loud guitar, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. That kind of music. Yeah. And I mean, just from what's happening around you, and I mean, what's happening in the world of music, you sort of, you sort of then actually sort of take cognizance of what they're doing and go, okay, well, that's great. It's not what I would do, but I hear where they're coming from. And obviously that's what people are looking for. Are you aware of that? I am. Um, there's also a danger that, you know, you don't want to start getting derivative. No. Uh, a lot of stuff filters you, you know, stuff filters through just, in, just going around from day to day. Mm. Um, how long it through that way rather. Right. Just picking songs that are coming through on the radio, you know, the driving around the car. Sure. You know, rather than like taking a current 10 bit album. Yeah. Listening to the best part of it. Mm. Um, the stuff that's popular, it does cut through into the kind of everyday life. Mm. So, mm. You are aware of what's going on. Yeah, because I think it's important that you can you can be able to touch that audience, you know, because that there has to be a link somewhere within whatever it is that you're doing that people can say, okay, um, it's, this is something that I'm willing to humor and get to know. Because I think Big Sky's at a place now where, to say, you're, uh, a big chunk of your audience is the converted, but the potential for you to break into a whole new audience, people who, who didn't know the killing floor, who, you know, who, who didn't know that at all and basically are only maybe interested in what you're doing now. Yeah, I mean, I put on the two years and I think the clash came over. Yeah. The H1. Yeah. Um, that is the greatest hit. Yeah, I mean, ten, ten and eight and five. Yeah, yeah. And the, the song I was playing was that I fought the law and the law. Yeah. I always thought it was a clash song. Yes. But I got the CD yesterday and it's a, you know, it's a, it's a country song. It's a, it's a Roy Aker. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's such a brilliant song. They played it so well, and they, my kids just loved it. Yeah. And I mean, I'd like to make it, you know, that sort of a sounding record. Yes. A, a rock and roll record with an anthem. Mm. Um, yeah. And, I mean, it's just, you know, it's a 40 year old song. Yeah. It's like totally, totally relevant. Yeah, yeah. Cause I, and and sound wise, you know, but, uh, I mean, I'd like to make a record of sound with my friends. Yeah, and I mean, I think that's the challenge. And I think if, it, if anyone can get that for you, not taking anything away from you know you as a musician, um, you know Kevin's probably the one that can do it. No, I mean you really need uh, to work with other producers. Yeah. Just get closer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, just some wise, you've got to have a guy who's just a chorus of the work. And you got uh, and be comfortable saying it. Yeah. Yeah, and you've also got to try to have enough faith in the guy to believe it. Sure. Otherwise, you waste so much time. Mm. You say no, I actually think the chorus. Is <laughs> <laughs> and then the chorus isn't fine, is it? Yeah. But, I mean, you've got to know, look, if this guy's not going to say the chorus isn't fine, if, if, if it is, mm. you know, he has enough experience to say that the piece that sounds really shit. Yeah, and you, and you don't and take it personally. Fine, let's change it. Yeah. 
Yeah. So I mean, all all things considered, um, I, I by comparison, to say where you were a year or two ago. Um, how how do you feel about where things are at for you? As I'm really good. I'm really glad that he came to me. Mm. Um, and what's nice is that we work well together because I'm used to working as a kind of independent record company. Mm, you know, mm, mm. Uh, I know what's required. You know, you've got to mark the record. You can't just expect people to know about it. Yeah. But you've got to actually work. You can't, you can't say, well, the record company. You know, the record company has got a, a million things to do. You know? mm. They've got the, you know, like you take so many, you know, like 20 records coming out every month. That's right. So you are going to get lost. Mm. And... Overseas, the, the definition, you know, there's a management who works an album, mm. uh, as well as the record company. Yeah. The management are always suggesting things to the record company. And they're sitting on their back. Do this mm. to this, you guys pay half and we'll pay half. Yeah. Uh, have you thought about doing this and let's get the band into this radio station? And then the management goes to the band and says, look, we'll be at the radio station there. Yeah. Now, unfortunately, in South Africa, there's never been that thing. No. But because I'm used to working on my own, I kind of know what to do. And, and they appreciate it too, yeah. yeah and so without standing on anybody's toes, I can say, look, I know you guys are busy, but I've managed to organize this with music. Are you okay? Will you pay for it? Then? Yeah. Oh, that's fine. Go mm-hmm. And so that's where we are at the moment, you know. Um, I'm still working almost independently as a record company, but luckily they've got the checkbook. Which is what you need, yeah, that's the reality, yeah. And they're so busy, they need to be glad that I'm, you know, all Yeah, take it, run with it, yeah. And I've sort of grown up enough just not to say, ah, oh, the record company's not doing what they should. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. It's a two way street. It's a two way street, you've got to work, you know, you get that. And, and artist managers in you know, overseas really understand that, 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 that um, and they, you know, they do a lot of stuff that, sure. that the record companies don't do. Heaven, heaven forbid someone should say it's a marriage, you know? <laughs> 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 but it is, it is yeah. probably the closest comparison yeah. that you could make, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's give and take. Huh? Yeah, I mean, you know, if they believe it, you, long term it's in everybody's interest. Sure. You know, you've got to build a career and... I mean, it's not really an age thing. If you think, you know, an innovative record company or an innovative manager or producer, mm. who would have thought five years ago you could take Tom Jones sure. and sure. him with a really hip band and he could become him? Yeah, you got to respect you that. Take, you've got rocks in your head. Man. Yeah. All broken down club singer from Las Vegas. Exactly. What do you mean he's going to play with this or that hip band yeah. and do a remix? And, and have a number one record. Yeah. 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 yeah I mean, that's what it's the music business is actually about. Mm. And it's not just a bunch of accountants, there are people who yeah, the stand and have got the ears for what people will, will buy into. Yeah. yeah, 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 and I think that's vital. Mm. And if you can get a marriage of those two happening, then you've got a recipe. I mean, if it doesn't work, then, then nobody can point any fingers at anyone and say that, uh, you know, that it didn't happen because of X or Y, you know. Yeah, and ultimately, I mean, it's, it's, it's great, even though, you know, I'm mm. getting older and I've you know, been doing this for 15 years. That's your wiser, you see. Still making interesting, shining stuff. Yeah. He's Relevant inspired, stuff. But yeah. Take like Neil Young, he's always reinventing himself. Mm. But I mean, you, you only have yourself to blame if you become this kind of parody of yourself. Yeah. And there are artists who've done that. I mm. mean, it's, uh, and they invariably are sort of fat, you know, <laughs> guys who kind of say, look, let's give it one last turn for the money. Yeah. And then you have a person like Neil Young who's always on the cutting edge. Yeah. Even though, you know, he'll go and do a thing with Crosby, Source Nash and Young. Sure. And then he'll just disappear and do something with Pearl Jam. Yeah. And then he'll do something on his own. Just throws people, yeah, yeah. And, you know, he's whatever, 55 or 54 or whatever. Yeah. And, you know, he's done 30 albums and he's a musical genius, but yeah. he and his manager in the record company work on stuff daily. Yeah. They like, you would think, oh, you'd say, I'm Neil Young and I can sit back on my laurels. No. But I mean, every day he's planning what to do, where we're going to tour, what album we're going to make. You know? mm, and, but he chooses not to as well. You know, he, yeah. I mean, I think that's a sign of a true musician as well. Somebody who, it's it's a, it's their life. It's not just... It's not a hobby. No. Yeah. It's not a case of, you know, being a, a, an opportunistic athlete. It's a case of this is what they do. Correct. And they're not doing it for the money. I mean, they, they, you know, they, 
So that's the cream on the cake, you know. The fact that money follows it is great. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, that's not the that's not the driving. You know, like you said, that's what they do. Yeah. 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 When they wake up in the morning. That's what they do. And they, don't, they have no doubt on what they're going to do that day. They're, no. Yeah. They're going to work on their music. Come out of our water. Yeah. 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 Like well, I think you're there. I think it's just now that you've you've got the machine in place to. I think so. I mean, I, I really feel good about it. And it's funny. Uh, I mean, a lot of success is confidence. Mm. Oh yeah. 